The Narwhal Nautilus is a cylindrically shaped fountain pen that's primarily made out of ebonite. It's available in a handful of different colors, each with aquatic names. The one that we have here is black with blue swirls and it's called Melandia. The bottom finial is rounded and the top finial is also rounded and it has a chrome dome. The clip is hinged at the back, but it's not spring-loaded, though it is very springy and functional. The cap is straight all the way down to a cap band, which reads Narwhal, and it's surrounded by an ocean-themed motif. There's then a slight step down to the barrel, and the cap comes off in one, two full rotations to reveal a stainless steel number six size nib. I have this one in a 1.1 stub, but it's available in other nib sizes. And on the nib, we see swirls that emulate splashes in the ocean. And in the middle, we have a depiction of a narwhal. The section starts with a flare up and then it has a tapering portion followed by threads that are smooth to the touch. There's then a slight step up to the barrel, and then at the top of the barrel, we have a series of three porthole shaped ink windows. It's important to note because there are three ink windows and not four, there isn't a straight pass through in this pen, which means it can sometimes be a little bit challenging to see your ink level. The barrel is then straight all the way back to a metal band followed by the piston knob. And if I give the piston knob a twist, we can see the piston coming through those porthole shaped ink windows right there. In the hand, the pen is well balanced and has good heft due to that piston filling mechanism. It's comfortable for long writing sessions, which is good because the cap does not post. In terms of size comparisons, here's the Narwhal Nautilus, a typical Pilot G2 rollerball pen, and your standard Sharpie. In order to fully disassemble the Narwhal Nautilus, you are going to need a thin wrench. I found this Wingsung wrench fits it just about perfectly, and you can pick these up pretty easily on eBay and AliExpress. Let's take the cap off. And if we look inside, we can see there isn't a cap liner, but just a little step up in that ebonite in order to seal off the nib, which is great. That means in order to clean this cap, all you need to do is run it under warm water. The nib and feed unscrew from the top of the section. And they're held together in this collar and they can be pulled right out. The section does not unscrew from this barrel, which usually I consider to be a negative. However, it's a pretty big opening, so you can easily clean this pen without fully disassembling it. If you do want to disassemble it, unscrew the back piston knob. Doing so will expose two flats, which we can grab a hold of with our wing sun wrench. Give that wrench a clockwise turn. And pretty soon, the whole piston unit will come out. On the top of the barrel, we do have a little trim ring. If you want, you can remove that. And then if you want to further disassemble this piston unit, you don't really need to for regular maintenance, but if you want to, you could. Continue unscrewing the piston knob. And pretty soon, that will come off along with your piston. And then we have a key and a connector piece. And at this point, the pen is fully disassembled. To reassemble, let's start with the piston knob. We'll put the key in the back of it. And then screw our connector piece on just a little bit. If we look at the bottom of the connector piece, there's a slotted hole. We're gonna place our piston into it and give it a turn. As we screw down, what we're looking for is when the piston is fully retracted for the piston knob to line up with this back flange. 
There's a little bit of a gap at the back of the piston knob, so I'm gonna extend the piston rod, pull it out a little bit, screw the piston knob a little bit more in, and then reinstall the piston rod. Okay, now it's all the way seated down, and we can see there's a little bit of a gap between the piston head and the connector piece, which is okay. That will slightly limit your ink capacity, but not extremely. We'll then take our barrel and place our connector piece on top, and then take our piston unit and screw it down in a counterclockwise turn. As I do that, we will expose the flats on the piston knob, which we can grab a hold of with our wing sun wrench and continue to give it a counterclockwise turn until it's fully seated. Be sure not to over tighten that. And now the piston should be fully functional. Perfect. Next, we'll take our nib and feed. The nib just sits on top of the feed. There aren't any slots or ridges to hold it in place, so just place it the best you can. And then if we look at the back of the feed, there is a flat on the bottom, and that lines up to a flat on the nib collar. Line those up and slide it in place. We'll then screw our nib unit onto our pen. Followed by our cap. And at this point, we're ready to ink up. Inking up the Narwhal Nautilus, today I selected Diamine's Blue Pearl, which is a nice deep blue with some shimmer. Shimmer is essentially little bits of glitter that you can mix in your ink. I feel it's safe to use this on a Narwhal Nautilus because it is so easy to clean this pen. So make sure your cap is on tight. You can see the glitter has kind of rest at the bottom. We'll just give it a little bit of a shake and that should start suspending that glitter again. There we go. All right, let's take the cap off the ink. And the pen. Make sure your piston rod is extended all the way down. Submerge the nib into ink and drop the piston. In order to get a good full fill, I'm going to extend the piston one more time. That'll expel some air and then draw back up. We'll go ahead, wipe off the excess ink. Cap up our pen and our bottle. And we're ready to write. Okay, writing with the Narwhal Nautilus cap and screws. And today we have a stainless steel 1.1 stub. And it's a well-tuned nib. It writes a little bit like a knife edge, which is common for stub nibs. And of course, you do need to be a little bit careful with the rotation of your nib. If you go up on an edge, you can uh, start seeing skipping and dry outs. Our ink. Again, is 
Diamine. Blue Pearl. Let me see if I can show off that shimmer a little bit as I'm writing. Hopefully that's picking up decently on the camera. For Flex, I'll turn the page. No real Flex on this nib, which is to be expected with stub nibs, but you do naturally have line variation with stubs. And for reverse writing. Nothing is coming out. I have occasionally gotten this to reverse right, but it is inconsistent. So that's not overly surprising. Um, again, for line variation, especially with stub nibs, you're just going to want to go vertical or horizontal. So what do I think of the Narwhal Nautilus? I think this is a very cool pen. I like the aquatic theme to it. The motif of waves in the cap band look very cool and I really love the porthole shaped ink windows. The pen is comfortable in the hand and as I mentioned the nib for a stub nib is very well tuned. I haven't written with other narwhal nibs but I have read that most of them are very well tuned and behave very um, consistently. I think that the finish on this pen is very beautiful, all the swirls of blue and black. And as I showed during the design overview, you can get this pen in a variety of different colors, so you can kind of mix and match to your own taste. The clip is very functional, um, though I do wish that the top extended a little bit further so you could hinge it from the back. So that's maybe a one point for improvement. I also really like that the cap seals off with a step up in the ebonite instead of a cap liner. However, I do have issues with these threads, and you may have noticed that a few times during this video. It is very easy to cross thread these threads, and I would say I probably do cross thread it maybe a third of the time when I'm capping and uncapping. Also, for whatever reason, these threads do collect ink. Pretty much every time that I ink up this pen, I end up getting my hands full of ink because they are held up on these threads, no matter how well I, I wipe it through. So that's a little bit annoying. Um, and then also, as I mentioned for the portholes, it's really cool addition, um, but I wish that they would have considered making four or maybe six instead of three. That way you could actually have pass-throughs on the pen and be able to more clearly see your ink level. But as they stand, they are perfectly functional, just takes a little bit of a learning curve to hold it at the right angle. I wish that the cap did post, but I don't really post my caps all that often, so it's not a huge deal breaker for me. Um, just something to maybe consider if you are one that enjoys posting pens. And besides that, I love the piston filler. I think that it operates extremely smoothly. It holds a huge amount of ink. The disassembly and reassembly ha is a little bit tedious. Again, the Lamy 2000 is probably my gold standard when it comes to disassembling piston fillers since you don't need a tool and you don't have to go back and forth and try and realign the components. Um, but this is pretty much fair game for the majority of piston fillers that you have out there. So I would say if you are a fan of aquatic themes or enjoy boating or just enjoy piston fillers and unique style pens, I think this is a great option. It's a comfortable pen in the hand, a very reliable writer, maybe it has a few areas for improvement, but overall a very fun pen to have in your collection. And that just leaves me to say...
Thank you for watching.